Hi everyone, in this video, let's take a look at what is meant by stoichiometry. At the end of this video, you should be able to understand what the coefficients are used for in a chemical reaction and understand that they actually represent mole ratios. The second thing you need to be able to do is to apply what is called the mole ratio for certain calculations. And in most of the cases, you need to convert the amount of a reactant to moles in order to find the amount of product. So let's get started. Let me show you an example. In this case, we have the situation where two eggs and a toast would make a set. So looking at this equation, we say that the ratio of x to set is 2 is to 1, while the ratio of toast to set is 1 is to 1. So what it means by a ratio is represented by the number in front of that substance itself. Pause the video and think of the following questions. Right, let's look at the first question. If I have 10 pieces of toast, I would be able to make 10 sets because the ratio is 1 is to 1. If I have 6 eggs, I would be able to make 3 sets because the ratio is 2 is to 1. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now if one toast weighs 25 grams, how many set meals I can make with uh, 200 grams of toast? Now because this ratio represents the number of pieces rather than the mass itself. So we have to convert the mass to find the number of pieces. So in 200 grams, I would have 8 pieces of toast. And that would mean I'll be able to make 8 sets. So just to reiterate the point that the ratios would represent the number of pieces that go in. So if I were to increase the number, the number of sets I can make would increase as well. Then again, you see that these numbers that are in front, they represent the number of pieces and not the mass. We can see that two eggs might weigh 100 grams, a toast might weigh 25 grams. So we cannot say that the ratio is 4 is to 1. However, from this, we see that all the reactants, which are those things on the left, when I add up all the masses, it will be the same as the masses of the products. So the moral of the story is that when we compare ratios, we cannot use mass to compare the ratios. Let's go on to an actual chemical equation. In this case, the equation says that two molecules of hydrogen reacts with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water. Pause the video and think of the following questions. Let's look at the first question. How many oxygen molecules can react with 10 hydrogen molecules? So we look at the number in front. These are called the coefficients. And we see that hydrogen reacts with oxygen in a 2 is to 1 ratio. If I have 10 of these, I will need 5 oxygen molecules. Next question. How many water molecules can be made with 3 oxygen molecules? So, look at the mole ratio again. 1 is to 2, so 3 is to 6. So I can make 6 water molecules if I have 3 oxygen molecules. Last question. To make 100 water molecules, how many of each of our reactants do we need? If I need 100 water molecules, I will need 100 hydrogen molecules because then the ratio of 2 is to 2. And I will need 50 oxygen molecules because this is a 2 is to 1 ratio. So to sum up, to make 100 water molecules, I would need 100 hydrogen molecules and 50 oxygen molecules. So again, the numbers in front represent the number of molecules that enter the reaction and react. So likewise, if I were to increase the number, 
the ratio will always remain the same. So what can we say about this? We can see from the reaction that two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. So this is called the mole ratio. If we were to convert the number of moles into mass, we will end up with something like that. And you can see that these numbers in front 2 is to 1 do not represent the mass ratio, but they represent mole ratio. But again, we see that the mass is conserved because the total mass of the reactants will be the same as the total mass of the products. So, if I were to give you the mass of, say, hydrogen, you would be able to use this equation to find the mass of water produced. So this relationship between the mole ratio of reactants and products is also known as the stoichiometry of the reaction. Let's sum up what we have learned. So the numbers in front, they are called the coefficients and they represent the mole ratio. We also talked about this thing called the conservation of mass. So the total mass of the reactants will be the same as the total mass of the products because nothing is created nor destroyed. The atoms are simply rearranged during the chemical reaction. When we come to questions on calculations, there is a four-step simple method that we can follow. Let's look at this. The first step is always to write a balanced chemical equation. In certain cases, this might be given in the question. The second step is always to find the number of moles because sometimes they may give you the quantity in mass, volume, number of, number of particles, even concentration. So whatever quantity we are given, always find the number of moles first. We then work out the mole ratio by looking at the coefficients and then convert the number of moles to the required quantity. This depends on what the questions ask for. So for example, sometimes they ask for mass, sometimes they ask for volume, and uh, etc. Now let's apply this four-step approach to solving a problem. In this question, you are asked to calculate the mass of water formed when one gram of hydrogen gas is burnt in excess oxygen. The first step is to write the chemical equation. Be sure to balance it properly, otherwise you'll get the ratios wrong. Now we are given the mass, which is 1 gram. The next thing to do is to convert to this quantity into moles. Because in order to compare this and that, we have to use the mole ratio. So using the formula, number of moles is the mass over the molar mass. We calculate that there is 0.5 moles of hydrogen. Since for every 2 moles of hydrogen, I get 2 moles of water. So 0.5 moles will give me 0.5 moles. And finally, we have to convert the number of moles into mass because the question asks for mass. So this is simply done by multiplying 0.5 times 18, which is the molar mass of water. Let's try another example. Pause the video and see if you can apply the same four-step approach. Step 1 is to write a balanced chemical equation. Step 2 is to convert the mass given into number of moles. Since magnesium and magnesium oxide is in 2 is to 2 ratio, we find that there is one more of magnesium oxide produced. To convert the number of moles to mass, we just multiply this by the MR, so that will give 40 grams. Let's try question 2. Now we move away from the visual representation and learn how to present answers as required in an exam. The first step is to write a balanced chemical equation. 
We then calculate the number of moles of hydrogen, which is 100 grams divided by 2 to give us 50 mole. So what we want to see is proper headings in front and the use of units. Okay, we then see that this is 2 is to 2 ratio. So 50 will give 50. So the number of moles of water would be equal to the number of moles of hydrogen gas that is also 50 mole. Look at example 3. Pause the video and try this yourself. Right, the first thing to do again is to have an equation. We are given 3.42 grams of hydrated copper to chloride. So we first have to convert this into the number of moles. So 3.42 divided by the MR of this is 0 0.02 mole. Okay, in the exam, you're required to show your working for this part. With this value, let's convert the number of moles to mass by multiplying by the molar mass. So that will give us 2.7 grams. Do you get this answer correct? Okay, one more example for you. Calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate obtained when 16.8 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated. Now the equation is given, so let's move on to the next step. We first find the number of moles of NaHCO3. So number of moles is the mass, 16.8, divided by the MR. We now look at the mole ratio. This is a 2 is to 1. So 0 0.2 divided by 2 is 0 0.1. Okay, so we can stop here. If the question asks you to calculate the mass, then you have to take this value to multiply by the MR of sodium carbonate. It is very common for students to do this question to make this mistake. So look here. When you are trying to find the number of moles of NaHCO3, the most common mistake for students is that they take 16.8 grams divided by 2 times this. Okay, why do they do this? It's because they see the number 2 in front here. Okay, but take note, nah. this number here is not included in the calculation of the MR. So this 2 should not be here. The 2 simply tells us the ratio that they happen in the equation. So 2 moles give 1 mole. Okay, this is not part of the, the MR of the whole thing. So please avoid this mistake here. Okay, to reiterate the coefficients, we do not include them in the calculation of your MR. Okay, one last question before we end. Again, the equation is provided. Okay, we are given the mass of CO here. So in order to cross over, okay, we need to convert the mass into the number of moles. So first thing, find number of moles of CO. Okay, we find that um, this is a 3 is to 2 ratio. So 3 units give 2 units. So if I have 2.625, how much will I get here? So simply, we just take 2 thirds of it, which is 1.75 moles. We are asked for the mass of iron. So we have to take the number of moles times the molar mass, which is the AR here, 56, to get 98 grams. So again, remember the units. So that brings us to the end of the video. Let's look back to our learning objectives. Number one, we have learned that the coefficients, those numbers in front in the chemical equation, they represent the mole ratios. And secondly, whatever quantity we get, we always convert it to the number of moles, then look at the ratio, and then use that number of moles to find another quantity that is asked for in the chemical reaction. So that's all we have today. Thanks for watching.